stop. I was, you know, morbidly obese. Uh, I didn't know if I'd wake up every day. Real life weight loss stories from Kirstie Alley's co-stars. I didn't feel like I was attractive to him anymore. To the half-ton family. I was disabled and really broke. The secrets behind going from this to this. Cut out the sugar today, get rid of the sodas, even if you have to switch to diet soda. That's next. Kirstie's weight loss has been quite dramatic. Check out the before and after pictures of this Food Network star. I was, you know, morbidly obese. Uh, I didn't know if I'd wake up every day. I mean, uh... I tell the story because you can come back. George Stella's story is inspirational, but not just because of his own dramatic 250-pound weight loss. I knew that every breath could be my last moment. But also because of his incredible shrinking family. The way we used to eat was killing us, and it was obviously killing us. That's son Anthony, who dropped 75 pounds. <laughs> I went down, you know, 20 pant sizes. His brother Christian, he took off 160 pounds. I mean, I had people where I worked that went on vacation for a month and they came back and they were asking if I was Christian's brother because they didn't recognize me at all. And check out wife Rachel, who also dropped 75 pounds. Your, your drink is almost like ice cream, it's so thick. I know. Mm. As a family, that's a total of 560 pounds and with no surgery. No, I've never thought of surgery because I'm a chicken about that. But other than that, I mean, yeah, and plus I had seen stories where people that had gastric bypass after three to five years, they hadn't changed their habits. So lo and behold, they learned to eat past their we, we met small many, stomachs. We met many they people their back. that all gained weight back 20, you know, 10 years ago they had the surgery, 20 years ago they had the surgery. Hey. We met them, they were overweight. How'd they do it? This was George's hell just seven years ago. An out of work chef and morbidly obese at 470 pounds. I had to sleep in a bathtub because my own weight was crushing my lungs. We didn't have a career, obviously. I was disabled and you know, really broke. And then a doctor's warning and a discovery. Oh, fresh food. That was the answer. And, it, and then beyond that, it's just making healthy choices. It's a learning experience. I got a red onion right here, so watch what I do. He overhauled his eating, and his weight started dropping. His family followed suit. Now this TV host of Low Carb and Lovin' It is gladly sharing his keys to success. And then in here, some of the things we're used to, so you know, that we like. Sugar-free popsicles. Why not? Key number one, try sugar-free. Cut out the sugar today, get rid of the sodas, even if you have to switch to diet soda, hey, it's the lesser, it's the better choice. Key number two, keep on track. And the answer is there. We just have to do it. it it's food. It, you know, cheating is a harsh word. It isn't about cheating, it's just about making the right choices. If you happen to make a wrong one, so what? Keep on going. Key number three, water. If you have the bottle of water, you'll take it, and water is very important. I take it everywhere I go. George is also sharing his passion for healthy weight loss with the Child Obesity Initiative, Junior League's Kids in the Kitchen. Go home, ask your kid to help you make some fruit kebabs, and call it a day, because that one experience will set the pace and put you on the right path for a lifetime. Voila. Coming up. I don't know how Diane Sawyer does stuff like this. A Day in the Life with Rachel Ray. I promised I'd only speak for a few minutes about my family story, so we showed you that. And by the way, that's 19 years ago that we started. So that's a, that was an old tape. So we started in 1999. But what I wanted to say is that we got started by accident. We thought low carb was a joke 19 years ago. And the same thing that I was doing in the restaurants for all of my customers, I wasn't doing for my family. One day, and I'm synopsizing, and I'm going to be really quick, and then we're going to make shrimp scampi and some pound cakes. One day, my son's girlfriend left the Dr. Atkins Diet Revolution paperback at my house. My wife flipped through it, and she said, it says here you can have all the bacon, eggs, and, and steak you want and lose weight. I go, that's the diet for me. So we got in the car, and we went to an all-you-can-eat buffet. We live in Kissimmee, Florida now, the land of buffets. And I went to a, one of those seafood buffets, lobster feast, I think. 
I went up after having six Maine lobsters, 100 steamers dipped in butter, um, you know, a little bit of broccoli because I knew that was low carb. I, I only knew the basics, cut out the sugar and the starches. And as a chef, I know what everything that has starches and sugar. So after seven times up there, I went back to my seat, unbuttoned my size 68 pants, which were actually like a 74 because they were held together by giant paper clips. And then I waited a minute and I go, I went back up and had another plate. Came back, it was not even four days later, I was down four pounds. And I go, we got to go to another buffet. Because that's what I, you know, I thought. So we did. We went out to every buffet in the area for two weeks. And I, literally every other night, I lost like 16 pounds in those two weeks. And then I realized something. I didn't want to go to buffets anymore. After, then I, you know, I, I said, there's something to this. I delved into it as a chef from a chef's standpoint, even though I, I know uh, a lot of the doctors that are here and uh, Work, got the pleasure to work with Dr. Atkins many years ago. But what I found was that my, my body wasn't craving anything anymore. So I wasn't even hungry, and the idea of all you can eat didn't appeal to me. And that's when I gained control of it, uh, of my eating. And so that was the beginning of it. And I only tell my story for two reasons. I believe there's two missing ingredients to successfully change the way we look at food and eat. And it's, it, they're the two hardest to come by, I think. And that's motivation and inspiration to do so. And once you know that you can be successful on low carb, keto, Weight Watchers, the zone, you name it. If you know, if that light bulb goes off and you know you can do it, you will do it. So on that note, I'd like to uh, start cooking. Is that okay? I mean, I could go on and on. My life's an open book on Google or whatever. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to make a dish here that I invented in 1983, I think, in Cafe, at Cafe Max in Pompano Beach on East Atlantic Boulevard. Uh, Mark Noatello is a good friend of mine. Stop in Prezos in Boca Raton. He's the new chef there. Tell him George sent you. He actually sent a hello to me. We started the first California cuisine, first mesquite grill, first wood-burning grill, and first show kitchen in the state of Florida, and that's Cafe Max. It became the home stomping grounds of what they call the mango gag. That's Oliver Saucy, Norman Van Aken, Mark Militello, and they don't, they leave me out. But I was there. We opened that together, and it was 4 p.m. Service was about to start, and Mark comes in and says, George, we're copying Wolfgang Puck's California cuisine. We need to have something that says California. And I go, oh, it's 4 o'clock. Uh, Anaheim Shrimp Scampi. We had to literally name it California because nobody knew what California cuisine was in Florida. Hadn't even gotten to New York. We bypassed them. That's why it's successful today. So to do that, we took regular shrimp scampi. We added feta cheese from California, a little arugula, which back then Florida didn't even know what arugula was. And we had some hybrid mini veg that we had to import from California. So we put the little acorn squash. We did that. And we served it over homemade black pepper linguine. I am still making Anaheim shrimp scampi today, and that's like 36 years later. It's one of my most successful recipes. I made it on my show on the Food Network. It's in all my books. And today I make the same thing, but I use Asiago cheese because I'm feta and scampi. Asiago, I'm Italian. It sounded better, and it is better. And then instead of arugula, which I don't care for, I use baby spinach. And we add avocado. So right now, I'm going to get started and show you how we make it. Okay, first of all, it's very quiet when I'm not talking. Talk amongst yourself. Have a wine. A dry wine. <laughs> These are good wines. But you'll see that in a few minutes. It goes great with my scampi. So we're going to even do the demo portion fast so we have more time to cook and eat. So one pound of butter. All right. But don't worry, I got you covered. It's the same thing. Okay, now, next case. Wine. <laughs> Look, if you like it, then you should cook with it. That's the rule of thumb. I like it. That goes good with the cardboard. It's biodegradable. Okay, you ready? Chopped garlic. Garlic powder. Usually I put it in these fancy tins. All right, we'll take that. Pepper. And 
Onion, it's true. These are the ingredients. Pay attention. All right, onions. Dash of Worcestershire. That just would have made a mess. And some salt. I like to use kosher salt. Why? Because we like to do this. And you can do that with kosher salt. You can see it on camera. You can even hear it. Okay. All right. Whoop. That's called chef hands. All right. So in this, we're going to have some parsley, some white pepper, some black pepper, some red onion, some garlic, some lemon juice. I almost forgot that. And you got all the ingredients in here. You give it a good mix. I like to soften the butter uh, before you do it. You have to. Otherwise, the white wine and the lemon won't mix in right. And if it's not soft enough, just put it in a microwave uh, on defrost for a couple minutes. All right, so you got all that. You mix it in. I, used, I also will put it in my mixer and whip it, whip some air into it so it's really nice. So we have that. And out from that comes this. And this is what we call scampi butter or garlic butter. And it's, um, it's a recipe that we make by the bucketfuls in the restaurant. So when you go in and you order a, a scampi or you order a, lobster, a, a, a soup, our base is this. And we take that and we take a spoonful. Where's my spoons? Come on. And we put it right in the pan and with the shrimp. And in four minutes, the shrimp is done. You might not get your food that quick, but that's not our fault. So it's a quick thing. It's called a master recipe because all those ingredients, if you had to stop and put them in every meal, you'd never get served. This is nice. This has got the red onions in it. You should smell this. Okay. So then you got that there. Turn on some heat. This is how easy it is. Once you have this, and you keep this in your freezer, so you can pull it out and, and you can make any meal any time. So here we go. Check that out. That's already cooking. That's done in four minutes. And while that's cooking, we're going to talk about what we're serving it over, which is this here. Ooh. Oh, my foot. It's all right. It's slippery because I had butter on my fingers. Butterfingers. Okay, you take this. Really, truly butterfingers. You take it and you cut it in half. It's very difficult. You can poke holes with a fork, microwave it for a couple minutes, and then it will cut in half very easily. So on that note, I have one cut in half. Ooh, yeah, baby. Okay. So if you've never seen one of these bad boys, you cut it in half lengthwise. And then in here will be pumpkin seeds, because this is a member of the pumpkin family. And you can scrape those out and roast them in a pan, uh, bake them in the oven for sunflower seeds. I mean, uh, pumpkin seeds. Sunflower seeds are good for potassium. Did you know that? Okay, so you take this. You can cook this ahead of time. I like to do them face down in a two inch water bath pan in the oven at 375 for about 35 minutes. Perfect. You can also just heat up the water on top of your stove like you do in pasta. Take the two halves, throw them in there, let them cook for 20 minutes, 15 to 20. Not overcooked, there'll be mush. So then when they come out, you can put them in your fridge, chill them down so they don't keep cooking. And then, look at this. You get spaghetti. The trick is go side to side, not end to end, when scraping them. And then you take this. Uh-huh. And you have hot water here. And you just dip it like I would pasta that we made ahead in the restaurant because we don't make it to order all the time. And then it's hot. And then you throw it in here with the shrimp and you get it all that shrimp goodness on it because it, it isn't pasta so you want to get that flavor on it not just pour it over it yeah let's get that keep that going so that's easy on spaghetti squash and then to make it stick to your ribs I take this and this is Asiago you could use feta it really is good I'll never make it yeah, I knew it. Okay, it had air though. All right, so now I'm going to cut this into little chunks, like I am. Come on, baby. Pasta. Doesn't it look like it? That's all part of low carb, man. You want to not crave anything, so don't do without. Reinvent. It's one of my sayings. Another one is shop the outside aisles of your grocery store. 
That's where all the wonderful fresh food is, the same food that our ancestors raised, grew, bartered, traded, and cooked, and we didn't have a weight problem. Okay. And when you're cooking with color, you're eating healthy. Very simple saying for low carb. Okay. Then, of course, they had tons of cheese. So we got the cheese in there. And then, avocado. Come on, baby. Come to Papa. I bought these big honkers. I grow these. I have one that's 24 foot tall in my yard. You know how to, you can grow it from the seed pit. Okay, keep going. My wife doesn't like this because it's hard to get the butter out of this jacket. Okay. That's true. Um, 46 years in the restaurant business. I started 13 years old at Deerfield Beach as a dishwasher at Ranch House Restaurant 46 years ago. All righty. So that's almost done. So we want to get right over here and add the avocado. And could I get someone from the audience that doesn't mind getting a little buttery to help dish these up and serve everybody? Okay, because it is pain. Yeah, don't be shy, Natalie. All right, so then here comes the avocado. Boom. Got All right. I will be nice around you. Um, hold on, hold on. Where's my aprons? There you go. You're welcome. All righty, so this is shrimp, Anaheim shrimp scampi. And once I serve this, I'm going to go right over there and we're going to start the almond flour pound cake with Plant City strawberry shortcake. I should have enough. I know you are, but you didn't give me my payola. Oh, yeah, that's right. Take your wallet. I took your credit cards. I am a chef. Okay, here we go. This is already sticking to the... P I mean, this is gorgeous stuff. All right, watch this. Voila. Okay, then we go right over here. You're coming up. And we'll get... Before I serve it... Ooh, that's... I f that's hard. We will get the next batch going. Doop, doop, doop. Oh, yeah. This is the fun part. Setting up is fun too. I'm going to turn that down to low. And we're going to come right over here. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. And here's what we're going to do. Since we're not making the pound, well, we're going to have to do it over here. I'm out of space. Hmm. No, no, I don't want to put it on the garbage. <laughs> I have my standards. <laughs> but we got this. Okay. And we just turn that like that. And we'll move this over here. This is the real kitchen. All right. So then you can either use these. I have a small pair of tongs somewhere that are really nice and easy to use. What happened to them? Oh, here they are. You might like these. Oh, okay. And just give them, I'll make one, yeah. tiny bit, okay, good. especially for that guy on the end. Guy on the end, come up. Come get your food. Okay. We'll start with one shrimp, but we should have more. Okay. Okay, more coming. Now, while I get this going, I'm going to keep on going with the pound cake. Somebody sing or something. All right, I was just kidding. <laughs> no, actually, that was nice. Oh, look at that. You're getting in line. That never happened before. I swear. No prima donnas here. Oh, they're right behind, they're below you. You can give them the forks and let them take their own. It's self-service now, guys. Welcome to the... Check this out. Here, put them right here. Yeah. Oh, they're playing me off with music. I got to go. I've, 
I thank you for this great honor, for the award that you didn't give me. It's what you hear. Good song. I love Billy Joel. I play piano a little, so and I love Billy Joel and the Beatles. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, I got, I got kicked off the piano. If I find a way to make noise, I will. Ask Doug. I will take over. Okay, while we're all getting into this. Oh, you need a little help? Would you do better with a spoon? Okay, because we got other spoons here too. Like this one. Okay. All right, so we got two pans going so we can get the food going. And I'll start talking up the uh, pumpkin or almond flour pound cake with shortcakes because we got all those fresh. I was up at midnight. Take, I finally got some really good Plant City strawberries because the season had started late and they weren't very good. All these on the table you see in the front, they're Plant City strawberries that just came in. I was up slicing them for you. Oh, yeah. You're going to get it. Or else. Okay. I think we need more butter. Ugh. I froze this so we keep in the cooler good. So it's a little tough. There we go. And the cheese. Okay, so almond flour pound cake. In the old days, 20 years ago, we used soy flour. We got away from that completely. Almond flour lends itself uh, perfectly to baked goods, and the best bakeries in Europe have been using almond flours for decades. Almond flour. The only reason we don't is because it costs so much, but now we are. We, we're finally learning. Okay. So to make almond flour, I'm going to get right over there and make it. All we do is we buy either blanched almonds for anything that's going to be white like this almond flour pound cake is white. And if you want a brown cake, like say a, a spice cake or a pumpkin pound cake, we use the hull on, um, the brown hull on raw almonds and grind them. But today, there's probably a dozen or more companies that you can buy almond flour. We always had to make our own because the brands that were out there really were bad. Okay. Woo. You can use any, any uh, like a provolone or a hard, any hard cheese. All right, so that's going. I am going to let that keep going and come right over here and show you how to make almond flour pound cake. How's it going? You need that other batch, don't you? Okay. We'll turn that baby up. Almonds. We buy them in the baking aisle. Walmart has them really cheap. And. Okay, here we come with some more pasta. Woohoo! Wow, baby, that's hot. I saw one that wasn't translucent or opaque. Okay, here comes some more hot stuff right behind you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you guys like to eat, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. We were running out there. Sorry, guys. More coming. I'm going to take my time right here, and we'll do more. Okay, so we got the almond flour made from grinding the almonds, and this is what you get. It should be a little finer, but for sake of time, we'll do that. And then, I couldn't get them over there. One, two, three, four. There's a lot of eggs in almond flour. Because we don't have yeast, we don't have things rising, we're using eggs. That's seven for that whole pound cake. Two cream cheese, I'm not going to waste them. And, uh, <laughs> and then baking powder will make it rise, along with the eggs. A little vanilla. Oops. 
Come here, baby. And then a little salt, dash, lemon juice, sugar substitute of your choice. That's a hot debate, hotly debated topic. I know what I like. I know what I've used for 20 years, but I also know that everybody is different, and everybody has different needs and wants, and there's always a selection for you, especially natural today. So sugar substitute. Well, my life's an open book. I use Splenda. So, and I'm like, I'm one of those old school guys that if it isn't broken, you know, my whole family used it. And, but I always have a whole front matter part that talks about it. So there we go. Do you hear that crunch? That's the eggshells. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> it's protein. All right. So now you take that. You pour it into this baking dish, and it only takes about 30 minutes to bake, and out comes a beautiful almond flour pound cake, and it really has the density and weight and feels like a pound cake. So we're going to have some of those, and these beautiful strawberries you see on the table are fresh yesterday from Plant City, which is right around the corner from my house, and I've got them all sliced up and ready to go with some sugar-free whipped cream. So I'm going to start one more pan, start cutting these, and we're going to switch. Is there anybody here that didn't get any pasta? Okay, no, no, that's fine. I'll just get one going on low, and we'll switch right over and start with the desserts. That is a mountain of butter. Well, you got lots of food. <laughs> Yeah, once everybody gets a little, I don't stop. I mean, when you're out there drinking that wine, I'm going to bring a whole platter of food out there. I'll just be in here by myself cooking. Oh, I like it. The hard part's the, the setup. Okay, so we got that going. Um, where's my spaghetti squash? I put it away so good, I don't know where it is. Voila. Did you use the peppers? No. They're on there for color and to show that low carb is about color. You know, it, it, it's not all gray. It's not, a, it's not all bacon. It's not all steak. It's not all what I thought it was in the beginning at all. And it's my mission in life to make it more interesting at all times. I have 11 cookbooks now. Uh, the newest one, Food You Crave the Low Carb Way, just came out two weeks ago on a Sunday at QVC. That's where I went after Food Network, QVC, for 13 years. I've been selling on QVC cookbooks. In the kitchen with David, man. And Mary. Okay. More coming in one second. Well, two minutes. Yeah, they're not, uh, they're, um, I forget, because I always get confused. They're the kind that I get at my local Cuban market. Uh, they're Florida avocados. Yeah. We have, uh, we've been getting bacon avocados in San Diego. Bacon? They're, no, they don't taste like bacon. Large, well, you can get the little ones, I think, are Haas. H-A-A-S. But you, you have to use four of those to get one of these. How is it? How is the shrimp? No, 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 I meant the people I didn't pay. <laughs> um, we're going to go right into the pound cakes after this, so anybody that's still eating. You're tough. <laughs> You'd make a great chef. More. I need more now. <laughs> okay, I need another avo. No, only it's added almost at the end. Yeah, it does. Okay. Come on, baby. Don't slice my wrist. Voila.
Oh, well, we have more coming. I'll give you a clean plate. We can get rid of that butter. Thanks for being patient while we feed everybody. <laughs> I usually only give a few samples, you know. All right. The pound cake's going to go quick. All we got to do is cut it and serve it. Okay, baby. This is the best batch, so you're lucky. Unless I do another batch. That will be the best batch. I know. You're, you know what they say? You're like a, a lost puppy. You ready? You can have more. There's plenty. Oh, come a little closer. I, didn't, I was trying to get you. All right, here it comes. The piece, the piece de resistance. There's still a little shrimp that has to cook in here. Good job. I would get, well, you know what? We'll use the same one because we're going quick. Okay, here we go. Open buffet. Just like when I used to do demos in the grocery stores. You know, one of the things I didn't tell you because there's a million things is that I, after I left Cafe Max in Pompano in 83, I invented a food product line called Cooking Magic. And it was scampi butter, almond, uh, France, Francais, Casino, and dill butter. And I sold it to Stop and Chaps, Publix, Winn-Dixie, Albertsons, all up and down the whole eastern seaboard, even in Puerto Rico. Flavored butters to cook anything. Okay, we're gonna give that a rest. I'm gonna wipe my hands on a clean towel. And I'm going to start cutting pound cakes and serving the next round. I will do that. So we'll save those. Here we go, baby. Woo, doggy. Can I do it? I tried doing that at the Food Network, and they, they had a fit. They go, if you drop that, we have to cut and start over. And we have 17 people here in Longshoremen, and they want to get home and watch the playoff game. So that really, that's a true story. Okay, here we go. Wow. Wow. I just want to show you this. Careful, grab it off the sharp knife. Tell me what you think of that by itself. <laughs> That's my wife Rachel baked these last night. Oh my goodness. It's so easy to make this pound cake. That's why, you know, I'm a chef, but we chefs don't like to bake usually because we have to time everything. This is amazing. Okay. Look at that beautiful pound cake, how it slices. We're all going to the same place. Out to get wine in about five minutes. Oh, I do have four of my books here, my four latest books, including a few left of the book that came out on QVC just two weeks ago. And it's only available there. It's brand new. Okay. Were there some different kinds of plates? Oh, you got them. There we go. Okay, here we go. Okay, I am doing the pound cakes down here on my table. You like it? Didn't know that spaghetti squash could be that good, right? There you go. Yeah, it is common these days. It's not like the old days. You can find them in every store. and They, they used to only be in hunk or giant sizes. 
Now you can buy them just right. I'm here for the wine. I don't know. I can't get that out of my head. I'm not even drinking. I've got to drive home. Okay. Yeah, we can, we can keep doing all of them. And then whatever's left, we'll bring outside to the people's. No, I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't buy small shrimp. Um, Pam and Doug splurged for the big ones. <laughs> That's a joke. Not really. I usually whip my own cream, you know, but for the sake of traveling, I didn't want to bring my mixer and um, sugar-free Land O'Lakes right from Florida. Sugar-free whipped heavy cream. It's hard to find. Publix has it. Walmart doesn't have it. Carl, did you bring me a burger, Carl? Look at that. Almond flour, pound cake, very easy. Strawberry shortcakes, very easy. Now, um, come on up. Every, you can just take one if you want. Don't worry if you want to be first because this goes quick. I can make another dozen of these in one minute. You're welcome so much. Oh, forks are down below. We have more forks underneath, more napkins. Here we go. No, it's sugar free. Well, no, you know, that's a good question. That's not true. I'm lying to you. It is, it is sucralose. So if you don't like it, I can always make you one without. But that goes against my religion. Okay. Yeah, it's got sucralose. Splenda, you know, sucralose without the starches. Um, the recipes are in my books, but also, if you type in the name of this online on Google, these recipes are available. And then, um, if you go to foodnetwork.com, you can get a hundred of my recipes for free, including these. <laughs> Don't thank me, thank the chef. Actually, I think you are thanking her. <laughs> what did I do? That's right. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you must have worked in the kitchen sometime besides at home. Did you ever work in the industry? No, but I would love to. Yep. Oh, no, no. Now you're crazy. <laughs> you're talking crazy talk. Here you go. You want to change uh, positions, just don't touch them with your uh, garlic hands. I'm trying not to. Okay, next case, more. We use every inch of this table. Now, if you want to get fancy, you do something like this. <laughs> Strawberry shortcake martinis. Huh? More coming, more coming, more coming. Where's Pam? Oh, that's okay. I'll be right back, everybody. For Pam or for you, strawberry shortcake martini. Who doggy? Okay, doke. Pan's here. Let's do it. It is funny. Funny I couldn't do it. Let's see. Not bad. If there'd only been a garbage can over there. These are hard to get apart. Okay. Bing, bang, boom. Oh, okay, okay. Everybody's being so nice and patient. You got any questions while I'm doing this? Can you get the whipped cream online? 
I'm sure you can. Amazon probably has it with one same-day delivery. I'm just guessing. But if you're going to do that, get my book online. <laughs> Woo. Next case. Do, do, do. Where else can I put a plate? You know, um, it's going to be, <laughs> I, I really couldn't tell you what books they're in. But I can tell you that I have the recipes here that if you want to make a copy or something. I have one copy. These, both of these recipes are in the first four books, which aren't for sale here. So... But there'll be similar recipes, like maybe one has the pumpkin pound cake. And you can, once you learn the basics, you can switch them up and make anything you want. Okay. We're going to put the recipes on the site for the Anaheim Shrimp Scampi and the Almond Flour Pound Cake. They're in my packet. I'll give them to you when we're done. There you go, my dear. Thank you so much. She's been a help. What's your name? Madeline. <laughs> Madeline. Let's hear from Madeline. <laughs> now, is, if there is some scampi left if nobody got any. Otherwise, I'm going to bring it out for the wine table for the, while everybody else is out there that may not have been in here. And I got plenty of pound cakes. And like I said, if you had any questions, otherwise, I'm... Is that me counting down? I still got seven minutes? Oh, forget about it. I'm going to talk your ears off. Seven minutes. Anybody here ever watch Low Carbon Loving It? I just got to take a mental picture. Okay. <laughs> it was on, I'll tell you some things. It was on for almost three years, two seasons, then the reruns that you don't get paid for. And then... Um, at one time, and this is how popular low carb got in the very beginning, and I think it's more popular now than then, uh, at one point for four months in a row, and of course they didn't tell me at Food Network, I had the number one rated show over Rachel Ray, over Emerald, and they never told me. No. Oh, no, they don't want you to know. I heard that the Sopranos didn't know they were popular. They were too busy filming until they walked out of their studio and people on the street told them. Yeah, because if you're popular, you want more money. Okay. Woo! That was loud, man. <laughs> Evidently, you get a loud noise when you do. Woo! Uh, all of a sudden, a flock of birds is coming in here. Okay. They don't have any shows on the Food Network. Um, I was told, and I know the president, the vice presidents, and all the people that you might in charge, they've gone a different direction over the years. They, all the people that ever taught cooking on the show are gone. So they used to call us the in-the-kitchen block because we were actually in a kitchen cooking. Now, all the late-night shows where they travel, they become 24 hours a day there, but besides the infomercials. So it's just the attention span isn't there. So... You can't just stand still and cook. But I imagine that'll change again, too. Uh, I like QVC. Nice people, good products, and they're very good to me. <sighs> Whew. Almost done with the... <laughs> hey, let's hear from Dr. Eric Westman, one of my oldest low-carb friends. We, we met when he was... What was your title at the Atkins Center? The, 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 the head honcho. <laughs> I never worked there. You didn't? No, I just pitched Dr. Atkins a few studies and paid him to do research back at the Oh. Well, I'm confused. But I understand that they wouldn't pay you. I hope you don't think less of me. No, no. 
<laughs> now, I, kn I know Jackie Eberstein is from Atkins. <laughs> I met her on the Atkins cruise when my wife and I were the official chefs of the Atkins cruise. Of course, Atkins wouldn't pay us, but we got to use the name. It was kind of cool because I never got paid to represent a diet plan, and that ended up being very important in my life. So Atkins was right. He stood right here in front of me while my wife and I were on our way to Cozumel, Mexico, and we had tequila chicken and some other Mexican thing. We had chef's jackets, sombreros, serapes, and we had piñatas on the table. No one had ever seen low-carb that exciting. And Dr. Atkins stood there and he goes, now you leave the... The doctor talked to the doctors and stick to the food. And I didn't know, but that was going to be my career, sticking to the food. That's what I know. So I didn't write any medical books or anything else. And uh, the rest was history after that. That was a fun cruise. Now Jimmy Moore goes on low-carb cruises. You ought to talk to him if you want to go on one. I hear they're the best thing out there. There's one coming up. He asked me every year, and I, I can't go because I'm doing QVC. <laughs> okay. Did everybody get everything? Yes, you may. Okay. She'll take the cash. <laughs> Here we go. Check this out, huh? Oh, whipped cream. Oops! Sorry. I almost did fall. That wouldn't have been too funny. <laughs> Enjoy that. Anybody? Yep, I got it. Thank you. <laughs> if not... If not, we're going to wrap up this demo, and I'm going to start signing any books that anybody might want, and then I'm going to come out there and visit you guys and bring some more scampi to the uh, wine table. So if you think you want to get some more, there's going to be more out there. I got another batch to cook. So thank you.